Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. I welcome you all in the name of Jesus. Hi everyone. I welcome you all in the name of Jesus. What will be your face when you see your master face to face? What will be your stand when you see your master? Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. You will come. Jesus is coming soon. He is coming soon. Would you be among the number when he comes? I thank you all for being here today. It is a blessing to be here. I have a message from heaven. I have a message from heaven. God is faithful. He is good. He is amazing. And every day, he speaks to us like almost every day. And today, he has something for us. He has something very, very powerful for us because he loves us so much. So, Lord, we glorify you. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your love and for everything. We bless this moment that we're about to listen from you. And we pray that you shall speak to our soul. You shall speak to us in the name of Jesus. We pray. Amen. So I will be very fast today. I'm going to be very fast. And uh, the Lord has touched me today to share this message with all of us. And I pray that this message will bless someone today. Thank you. I pray that this message will bless someone today. So the Lord, sorry, hold on. I'm sitting on the floor today. So it means this is very serious. I'm on the floor. It's very cold. As you can see, I'm in the UK. So, you know, it's winter time, but I'm sitting on the floor because this message has to go out there today. So first we bless the Lord for his love because this, I don't go one day without listening from God. I just don't go a day without trying to find out where am I standing with God. Where am I standing with God, you know? I always tell people that I'm not scared of death. Death is not my problem at all. If the Lord decides to take me home today, glory be to Him. But the only thing I'm scared of is to stand before Him. And to be told, a way I didn't know you. A way I didn't know you. That's the thing that gets me like, wow. So for me to not get to that point every day of my life, I stand as I woke up. I know it is a blessing. I know it is a new day so I can repent. I can prepare my soul to see Christ. And I can put my life together once again. And I thank God for this day that... 
it allowed us all of us to say so thank you all for being here today the message that i'm about to 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 share with us i got this message two weeks ago hi yeah leticia hi sis i got this message two weeks ago it was about rupture so i didn't want to share the message only because i missed the rapture for some reason i didn't make it i didn't make it so i remember posting the message on facebook like three rapture dream in one night obviously it was all three in one night like i woke up i went downstairs to use the toilet i came back and the dream carried on from the place that it stopped i woke up again i was like wow and i slept again and the dream came back again so that makes it three times in one night and on that day the lord allowed me to miss the rapture the reason why the lord allowed me to miss the rapture is because he wanted me to stay behind to see the reason why so many people missed that rapture so i didn't miss the rapture because i was ready I missed it because God wanted me to find out the reason why so many people couldn't make it on that day. Like, why they didn't make it. So, what happened was, the rapture took place, obviously. People was going, and I, I found myself behind. And I started crying, and I was like, Lord, what is going on me? Are you forgetting me, like me? This is not fair. I started crying, and as I was crying, I, I don't know what happened, but I went up. But the up that I went was not to reach heaven. I just went up to the level that I can look down to see people. You know, I went, but I was looking pe to people. I didn't go to, you know, like everyone else was going. So I, as I... Oh, thank you. And I, as, I, as I was up, the Lord took me to my beautiful sister. So this message... That was the message I got last like, two weeks ago. And after that, I'm going to share the message that I got today. So the message that I got two weeks ago, the Lord took me to where I saw so many women. A lot of women. White, black, yellow, all you can think of. Short, beautiful, all, all, the, all the kind of women. So it was like every woman from the world, apart from those who was ruptured, who went, who went with the ruptures. So I, I found... I found myself like I was looking at the woman and in the woman that I was looking what I realized was the way they was dressing the way the the way they was behaving the way the things they were saying you know it was just like and even though the rapture was taking place those women didn't know the rapture was taking place so they were busy doing what they loved doing so they was busy taking care of their body they was doing taking care of anything else shouting singing dancing or they're going to clubs so there was all of them in one place so all of them had you know, the, the, the things that god wanted me to see was the way the appearance the voice that was looking outside the things they was wearing the things they was doing it was just ungodly it was just ungodly and the, the most painful part on all this is most of them were christian to go to church according to what god wanted me to know and to find that most of them were christian as a christian they're doing what they want to do as a christian they don't even know that the rape is taking place they are christian they read the word of god but they don't even, but did you even realize that the rape was taking place and the lord was telling me this is the world that we are today this is what is happening this is what is happening to my people so in that what the holy spirit was trying to to talk to me is like many people will miss the rapture because of what the devil has been deceiving people many women out there many men of there many men of god women of god everything you can think of will miss the rapture only because of the gospel that has been speaking right now i used to be one of that gospel as well do you know that gospel that gospel that gospel is the one of the say the one that we say god looks in the heart you know that gospel that you and i will love i don't anymore 
you and I used to love, or you still love the gospel. Like, okay, let me just do this. Let me do my life like this. God looks inside my heart. So God gave me, the Holy Spirit gave me this verse to, to help us to understand the reason why God looks in our heart. Because this gospel is the gospel that will make a lot of us, so many of us, to miss rapture. It will make so many of us, when you die, you will see two angels. Those angels that will come to take you, they will take you not to the place of peace, but they will take you to the place of painful. Why? Because you allow the devil to deceive you by the gospel of this book that we're going to read. So if you can grab your Bible, because we, we, we must read this. Like. We, we, we must read this. If you can get the Bible, and guess what? I have a new Bible. Like the very, very best Bible. It was given to me by this man of God in town that he just stopped by and he said, you want the Bible? And I was like, you know what? This is God. And God knew how badly I wanted this. People have been telling me that this was the best version of the Bible. So I didn't know what to do, but God has blessed me with one, hopefully. So we're going to read in the book of uh, 1 Samuel 1, and I think 16, 7. So one time was 16, 7. I'm going to be very fast because I'll be going to work very soon. So the Bible is, this story that we're about to read is the story of Samuel that God sent him to go look for the new king. So God sent him to the family of David. And when Samuel got to the place, David's brother was coming, obviously. All of them was coming to Samuel. And whenever that Samuel looked at them, he will say, I think it's this one in his heart, you know, because he's big, because he's tall. So you may be this one. And God will turn that down by saying, no, it's not the one. So all of them, he, there was, you know, you know, for Simon, he was so sure he was going to be one of them because they looked like one. But God ended up by saying it's not them. So he was David. So 16, the Bible says, I mean, sorry, 16 to 17, the Bible says, but the Lord said unto Simon, look not on his appearance. Or on the height of his statues, because I have refused him. For the Lord said, not as a man said, he said that not as a man said, but he looked in the heart. So, this verse that this is the verse that we all use it to back up our sin, obviously. You can't lie to me because I used to do that. We all use this verse as a reason to hide. To, to not want to do the will of God or to because we love our lives so much we love to do the, the we want to live the way that we want to live we don't want the Holy Spirit to live with us we don't want the Holy Spirit to tell us what to do we don't want the Holy Spirit to guard our steps so we back up with this verse of saying oh no God looks inside my heart my heart so many people they don't even know the story behind this statement all they can read and all they can remember is God looks in my heart. You don't know the story. Listen, let me tell you. God was not saying, I look in my, I look in your heart. So, no, okay, you know what? Whatever that your body does, <laughs> you know, I don't care. That's not, that was not what God was trying to say. God was only saying that when I pick someone, when I decide to choose somebody, when I decide to take somebody to bring him out and to start using that somebody, I don't look in the way they look. You know, like, let me talk about myself. I am in a family of two, five, five, five children. I am, like, I come, before me, there's three. I have two elder brothers and I have one big sister, then me and then my brother. So if you put all of us to stand here, I'm the shortest one in the family. I'm very short, and I'm very petite, like I'm small, you know. And if we, we really, we really want to choose who God can use, it wouldn't be me. It would never be me. But in my family, I'm the only one standing, even though I am small, even though I am this. But God could see the heart. He knew if I pick this one, she would go here. That was the same statement God was trying to say. I do not look in the body. I don't care how tall the person look. I don't care how big the person look. I don't care how beautiful the person is. I don't care. All I care is the heart because I see the heart. I know what they can use that heart for. I know what they can use that heart for. And I know by choosing this person, he will go or she will go very far. God never said this. As an excuse to sin and I was as I was looking to those women they looked ungodly 
because let me do not be deceived this this they are look of children of god and they are look of children of this world those who go after what all they do those who want to have what rihanna has those who want to have what beyonce has those who want to have what all the people has and they want to behave like them and they are look of those who want to look like the children of god do you know that when i go shopping i go with the holy spirit when i first gave my life to christ i remember because god gave me a really good shape by the grace of god so i used to love wearing everything so god told me not trousers you know for you i don't know about you but for me no trousers so okay deal i'll be wearing skirts you know fine skirts and the first day i went skirts and i tried skirts you know, i was like oh my god this is very tight no? but it looks good oh wow i'm so excited then the holy spirit spoke you say you're not getting this one you're not buying it and i'm trying i rebuke you in the name of jesus i was trying to rebuke the holy spirit why because i wanted to wear what i wanted to wear because the shape was out because everything was out i wanted people to see everything even though i gave my life to christ the holy spirit said no you're not getting this this is not what you have to wear this is what you can't wear and after that i was like okay oh so do i go shopping the thing so from today i'll be taking him to shopping with me anything i want to buy is that okay holy spirit yes then i will get it i saw women the lord took me to women all of them missed the rapture all of them including me but my case was different because i had to get a message from from that place this is the church that we have today this is the woman that we are today many of us will be surprised when we stand before the throne of god only to find out the whole you know the things that you think is small don't the, the things that you think you don't really pay attention to you think it's just small those are the things that can make you miss heaven the little one god is holy the bible says that without holiness no one can see the lord so that makes it looks like even if I have one unclean thing, I can miss heaven. You know, when I was a child, people, I, I don't know where, where I got this from. People used to tell me that, you know, when Jesus comes or when you die, God will put your, your good and bad into a balance. And if the good is a lot, you make heaven. If, you don't, if the bad is, you know, those, those gospel, like God will try to see. There's no such there is no such for you to make it god has to find you blameless for you to see god you have to be you have to be clean for you to see that day for you to see the king of the holiness the king of 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 everything you have to be found blameless you have to be found blameless and that's the reason why god has kept you today to listen to this life that's the reason that god has kept me today to share this gospel so that you and I can go back and repent. So that you and I can go back and seek him. I always tell people this. When it comes to my way of dressing, nobody preached to me this gospel. Nobody. We have few pastors preached about the gospel of holiness and righteousness. There are few of them. Many of them don't want to preach only because they don't want to lose people from the churches. Many of them don't want to share it only because they are scared of that you would leave the church so they're not doing it for god they're not preaching the gospel the way it has to be preached that's why god is taking people like me me nobody nobody god come to my house call, call, call. Uh, that was in god sorry i'm coming god come to my house i need you to go out there i will use you because the pastors they only have names pastor this pastor that but they're not doing it and because of that god is is calling people who are not meant to people who can't stand like me what do i have to offer but god said okay i'm gonna pick you because so many people don't listen the pastors the mouth of the pastor are closed they don't do they're not they're not doing the things the way they have to do it and for that reason god is is picking everyone he's knocking at everyone's house muslim christian is knocking to call even one person even their children god is calling them why because the gospel is not preached the way it has to be preached i remember seeking god myself i always tell people that this i remember seeking god and telling god if there is something oh lord if there is something that will stand on my way on that day speak to me speak to me i never waited for a pastor to preach to me 
I never waited for a church to come to my house and tell me. I never waited for that man of God to stand and st start saying, God, this thing. I never, I went to God myself and God could see my heart. I was so ready to give everything. I was so ready to do everything to the point that I, I could, I remember texting my sister, telling her, sister, sister, please, I don't even think I will get married. Jesus will come. That was how close that looked to me. It was like everything is happening now. I have to get it right now. I have to start doing it now. There's no time to waste. There's no time to waste. I wasted my time. You know, I, God called me on my 20th, but I feel like God called me I was too old. Because I wish I gave my life when I was 11. I am young, but I still feel old. I was ready. I wanted to, to do something for God. At least when I stand before him, even though I'm not going to do it for a long time, it will come. When I stand before me, at least I will have something good. And he will, he will actually hug me and say, welcome faithful servant. I wanted that so badly. So I had to go and seek God for myself. I never waited for someone else. I never waited. Yesterday I was, I was at work. I was working. God started talking. Normally, there are so many people that God gives gives them preaching, preaching when they, they are they are praying. But that's not my case. God gives me preaching. Oh, the Holy Spirit gives me no preaching when I'm I'm taking bath. When I because when I, when I'm, I'm I'm in the bathroom, I preach in the bathroom. I preach to myself. I really take time. I will stand and I'll start working before I have bath and I'll start speaking in tongue. That's my favorite place. I don't know for some reason, and that's where God talks to me a lot. And God was, the first day God told me, do you know the kind of people that I will reject on that day? So when Jesus was telling many will call, he asked me, do you know the kind of people that I was talking to? God gave me that, those people, but I'm not here to talk about that today. And yesterday, the message matches came again and Jesus said, you know, you have to be careful. There is a man in the Bible. We all know the story. He came to Jesus. He came. He said, Master. That's what the Holy Spirit is giving to me. I read this verse many times. But the God is telling him in the old way. He said, man, the man said, Look, Father. He said, Master. Master. Many are saying that you are the, this. Many are saying that you are that. Many are saying this and that. And God said, oh, Okay, that's fine. You know, that's fine. But what do you say that I am? Forget about what others are saying. What do you have to say? What do you, you as a person, what do you say that I am? What do you say? And that's the question that God is going to ask us on that day. That's the message from God. That's the message from the Lord. That's the same way that God is going to ask us. You can't stand before God and say, my pastor never told me. You can't stand before God and say, this is what my past, my church told me. You can't stand before God on that day and say, this is what the word told me. Because God is going to tell you, what, did, what do you say that I am? If you, hope, you, you really wanted, you really wanted to make this, you would have gone to seek me. You would have gone to search for me. Because the question that God will ask that man, he said, what do you say? Because you have been you have been listening to what I'm doing. You have been seeing what I'm doing. You 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 are it's, you are around me. You can see everything. So with the things that you can see, what can you say that I am to you? What can you say? It doesn't matter what anyone else is saying. It doesn't matter what anyone is anyone else is preaching. What do you say? What do you do? You know, I always tell people, this is the first the first thing that would judge us. This is the first thing that will judge us. The word of God will judge us. The word of God will judge us. On that day, there shall be two books. The books of life. The book of life will gonna be there. And the book, the word of God will be there. Because that was given to you and I. To live the way God wants us to live. I saw those women. They was carried away. They, they was doing everything else that all the people was doing. They was just, you know, raptures taking place and they don't even know. They are Christian. And as I was cooking, my heart was bleeding. I felt so bad because it seems like those who, was, who went through rapture was a lot. And those who were left behind, no, those who left went on rapture was just not that many. But those who were left behind was like the old world. So many of them. So many of them. So many that there, there was not a, a, a gap between them. 
so many people, so many people. And imagine I was looking like, I, the Lord took me like very up and I was looking like this. What's going on? What's going on? It really pains me to the point that I didn't want to write it. And I was waiting for God to explain to me why. Because I couldn't stand the fact that I missed rapture. And I was waiting for God and God was like, I wanted you to see because I want you to talk to my woman. Do you know, how do you feel? When you put something on and somebody stop you by and say you look sexy, how do you feel as a woman of God? People tell you you look sexy. How do you feel? As a woman of God, a servant of God, you dress very well. You go somewhere and someone stop you by and say you look very sexy, sexy, sexy. How do you feel? How do you feel? How does that sound like? Like, here? You know, one day, I just decided to wear a dress. That dress was very tight. I went out. And this young boy, luckily, you know, he, he, he just turned around and said, Oh my gosh. He looked at, and I felt really bad. I went to repent. I was like, Lord, I didn't really pay attention. I thought it was just a normal. So he said, I, I thought it was just a normal. But that boy, and I can look at that boy, like, I look at my life, I felt so bad. I went back to see God and say, Father, please forgive me. Even this little boy can look at me like that. Yeah. How do you feel? When you go, you pass before men and they look at you. How do you feel? I told you this many times. I was shown many men who used to go masturbate is that how you say it? they're gonna masturbate only because they saw me they just got my picture they're, they're doing masturbation with my pictures that was back then when i was in the world i made so many so many men to go masturbate and let me tell you if i died before giving my life to christ that sin was going to stand on my way it was going to be one of the sin on my sin list even though i was not the one who masturbated but because i made them fell to that sin we are all in the same place we are all in the same place because if i didn't expose myself like that maybe it wouldn't have happened but i did and you can't i am a woman you know i'm young i'm very young so I, we understand each other so you can't lie to me that when you wear something you don't know that men will look at you we all know we all know that as I'm wearing this skirt. We all know. We all know that when we look ourselves, I thank God because I'm not old. If I was an old woman, you would have said, Oh no, she's old, her time has passed, but I'm young like you. So we understand each other. We are all in the first, first, uh, 21st century. We are old. So I know what is going on. I know the sickness that we are suffering. I know it. When we look, we know that we look sexy. We know what we, what what is here. We know it that I'm dressing this. People's gonna look at me. People's gonna like me. People's gonna say, "Wow!" Even when I'm ordering a dress or something from 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 website on the shop, I know. I know. But let me ask you: Would you really want to miss rapture, or would you really want to spend your eternity in hell only because of what you dress? The church don't talk about it. They will not talk about it because they're scared that you go out. But I'm preaching the gospel because I don't want on that day to stand before God and God will tell me away as well because you, you knew the truth. I can't hide the truth. It doesn't matter if you remove me from, from your Facebook. It doesn't matter if you go and talk behind me and say she drinks too much. It doesn't matter if you hate me. It doesn't matter if you believe me. As long as I know I'm doing the will of God, I'm fine. And as long as I know that I'm doing good, I'm fine. And as long as I know that... God in heaven is proud of me. I am fine. One thing I wouldn't know is to close it and watch, watch people doing what they're doing. The truth was given to me not to hide. The truth was given me to speak it out. To speak it out. I don't just come and speak. I think the last time I came was four months, five months ago. I, I'm always on my Facebook posting, but I don't come out. I only come out when God tells me to come out. And today, God has told me to come out to speak to you. 
to speak to you. To speak to you. Pastor will not tell you this. I'm not going to lie to you. Your pastor will not. Your church will not. They wouldn't. They're not. They're not telling us the truth. The, the pastors are not helping us. Those that God put there to help his people. They are not doing the job. But I thank God because why? Jesus, when he left, he never left pastors behind. He left disciple. That's powerful. He never left pastors. He left disciple, which makes all of us the disciple of Christ. So you know the truth. Step out. Share the truth. So many people are dying. So many people are dying. And they're making the way to hell. They're making the way to hell. They are making the way to hell. Women of God, they preach the gospel. They stand before people, they preach, they went everywhere. But they died, they go to hell. Somebody who preach holiness. Somebody who preach righteousness. Somebody who cover their body. Somebody who cover their head. Somebody who didn't wear makeup and didn't do all those things. She died, he goes to hell. He preached holiness. He dies and he goes to hell. This is very serious. There are things that, even though we preach righteousness, even though we preach holiness, there are things that we do not know. We have to seek God for it. We have to go to God and to seek Him for it. It's not just enough to preach. It's not just enough to cover the body. It's not just enough. There are little things that we're doing every day, every single day. For us, it's little. For us, it's very little. But you stand. The Lord did me this um, favor to, to be blessed with this testimony. Someone said, he said, for you to get to hell, you must have a password to hell. So your password is written here. It's written here. That's why I have all the password has written. When you, go, you get to the doors of the torment place, because hell is not open yet. Heaven is not open yet. At the time that we are, heaven is closed. Hell is closed. It's not open yet. For those who God take them to hell or heaven to visit, that's the grace of God. God takes you to the future to see. So you can know the place. Hell is not open yet. But there is a place that when you die in Christ, you go. We call it, um, I know the name in French, but the English one is just gone. Uh, Lieu de repos, the place of peace or of rest. Yeah, the place of rest. And we have the place of torment. So for you to get, when you die, for you to get to the place of torment, you have to have that password here. So when you come, you get to the door, the door scans that password and it lets you in. You can only get to that place that we call hell if, if you have that password. And ask me what that password is. That password is all your sins. You know all the sins that you have been committing. That you have never repented. All the sin. That's the password. It's all here. It's all written. It's telling the devil. It's telling hell that that is how it she belongs to us. It belongs to us because you have it. Because you have it. The sin that you never thought it was. I love how the Bible says this. The Bible is telling us there is not such a small sin and big sin. I can just tell, I can just insult somebody and someone who killed somebody. All of us, we commit sin in the house of God. It's sin. The thing is, we think we are already saved. It's done. We think it's done. You know, the job is done. Jesus paid the price. I accepted Jesus. Accepting, Je accepting Jesus is not enough. Accepting Jesus is not enough. Seeing visions is not enough. Speaking in tongue is not enough. Listening to the voice of God is not enough. You can have all the spiritual gifts, but end to hell. You can have all the gifts, all the gifts. But I, I always tell people, I used to speak in tongue from the age of 12. I used to speak in tongue. From the age of 12, I had that gift of tongue. I had that gift of visions. But yet I was in sin. Me, 
I will be with my boyfriend tonight. Like, not like having sex, but kissing and touching. We will do it tonight. And I come home, go sleep, and God is talking to me in that night. And if I die, I will go to hell. Yes, God is talking to me. That's why Jesus painted these powerful pictures. He said, many will come and he said, Lord, in your name, I did this. In your name. Because we are very so comfortable. When we see vision, when we listen to God, we think that that's it. We think that, oh, okay, because I, I, I can listen to God, because I can do this, I'm saved. It's done. No, it's not done. You can have all the gifts. You can have everything in the world, but still go to hell. You can have everything you can think of. I had all the gifts, not all, but I had visions, I had tongue, but I was living in sin. And if I died, my way was hell. Yet I had gifts. We think because we can speak, because, because we can touch people, people will go on the floor. We think that's it. That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. it takes a lot. It takes more than gifts. It takes more than gift. Do not be deceived. Do not let, allow the devil to, to make you feel comfortable because I have this, I have that, that's it. No, that's not it. You still have a lot to do. The Bible is telling us to work our salvation. Our salvation is something that you take care of. You, you look after. You know, this place, it got marks. Oh no, I have to clean. You take it out. You take it out. This is how you do with your salvation. This is how you do. You look. No, this is what, oh, no, no, no. This is, you clean your salvation. You work your salvation. You work on your salvation every day. Salvation is something that you look at every day. Because you can be saved today, yourself, Jesus today. You die tomorrow and go to hell. It can happen. It can happen. Salvation is something that we have to take care of. God is amazing. He gave us everything. We have almost everything. Almost everything. That we can seek of. We have almost everything. We have this. We have this. We have this. Almost everything. And God is giving us. This is yours. It is your duty to take care of. It is your duty to look after your salvation. And for that, God knew that it will be our duty to do it. That's why he sent his Holy Spirit. That's why the Holy Spirit is there. That's why the Holy Spirit is there. When he sees you. Even he sees that you really want to do it. He comes to help you do it. He comes to help you do it. He comes to help you do it. Because you can't do it on your own. But first you have to show that you will want to do it. I had this problem in my life which was forgiveness. I couldn't forgive people. For, I don't know. It, it, it's not because I, don't, I didn't want to forgive. I can't forgive. But it's because I, find, I was finding it hard to forgive. But what I used to do was, Lord... I know it is hard for me to forgive, but please help me to forgive. Teach me how to forgive. And that's how God started teaching me how to forgive. First, I had to speak it out. Lord, see my heart. I want to do it, but how? I really want to do it. Because I know that the only way you can forgive me properly is how I forgive. How can I ask you to forgive me when I can't forgive others? How can I ask you to, for, to forgive me when I find it hard to forgive others? How? You know, Jesus on the cross, as a human, because Jesus died as a human because the Father left him. The Father has to leave him. He has to leave him. The Father has to leave. So Jesus will deal with the sin of human as a human. The Father has to go because, Je because Jesus has to, to take the body, this body. He has to die with this body. He has to die with this body. And the Father has to go because the Father doesn't die. The Father doesn't die. And Jesus saw the Father going and shouted, Father, why are you going? I was with you. When I was born, I was with you. When they was doing all the things, I was with you. Father, when they was carrying me to this place, I was with you. But why are you leaving now? Where are you going? At that point, Jesus asked, why? Why are you going? The father couldn't die. Jesus has to die as, as, as a human. He has, to, he has to deal with the devil with this body. Jesus didn't die as a 100% God. He died as a 100% human. That, that's how he died. So he understands. You know, even, even when he was dying as an hundred percent human, he still asked God to forgive 
those who are hurting him. We must be like Jesus. We must be like Jesus. You want to make it? You want to see him? You must be like him. You must be like him. So this was the first part when I had to talk about the dream that I had for our women out there. For those who say God looks in the heart only. That was what I saw. And God allowed me today to share it even if it's after two weeks. And I trust his time. I trust his plan. And here I am today. So let's talk about what I saw today. In a vision today, what I saw was yesterday, sorry. The rapture was taking place. He was ready. But what I didn't understand is we we as we know when the rapture is taking place, no one can can ask for forgiveness. It's done. Grace is it's done. It's done. It's done for you. You you had all the time. But the thing is, everyone was going. Everyone was ready to be a rapture. It was all everyone was going. But what what happened was I just need to see how many I have done the hair. So yeah. So what what I realized is I saw Jesus. I saw Jesus. I saw Jesus. Like you know, the, the glory, everything was around him. The, the glory was around me. You know, all the rapture dreams that I have, it happens that I know it's rapture, but it never happens that I'm seeing Jesus himself. But this one, I saw Jesus. I saw the glory, the glory. I could see Jesus and people was going. So what happened is I looked around me. I saw a few people that I know. Jesus said to me from heaven, from where he was standing up there, he said to me, tell them I'm giving two seconds. Tell them. I'm giving them two seconds. As I looked, I saw my brother. As I looked, I saw my sister. As I looked, I saw people that I know, people that I love, people that I care for. I saw them. Everyone was going. It's like Jesus allowed me to stay all alone. He said, tell them I'm giving them two seconds. And I shouted, very, I shouted. My brother was like very far from me. I said, Joe, <coughs> repent. You only have two min, two second, two second, one, two. Repent. He said, I don't know how to do it. You know, I, I don't, I, there was no time to explain him how to do it because it's just two second. I just say, repent. I just say, repent. I said, I'm people, repent. You don't have two second. And that was it. I left. How can God give us two seconds? We all know when the rapture is taking place. It's done. It's done. It's done. There's no mercy anymore. You missed. You missed. But God gave us two seconds. God gave us two seconds. People didn't care. Even as I was shouting, those around, it was like it was like it was in the market or somewhere. People didn't care. I was shouting. I was shouting. I was shouting. And the Lord was there waiting. Even for that one to say, okay, let me take advantage of these two seconds. The Lord was waiting. As he told me two seconds. Everyone else left. I was the only one. Everyone else was gone. I was the only one there. And the Lord up there was waiting. At least for one person to realize the grace of two seconds. At least for that one soul to realize and to take advantage of that two seconds. And to say, Father, I'm sorry. Father, I'm sorry. Who is that God who's going to give us that two seconds? When he knows that he gave us many years, but didn't do it. That's love. That's grace. And that's what God is giving us today. 
the first time God gave me this message, he told me, I'm coming soon. The second time, I remember telling me, my coming is new. After that, God said, I am already here. Then the Lord said, I am standing on the door. And today is not on the door anymore. Today, God has made his way in already. But even though he is in already, he still decides to give us two seconds. Two seconds. The Lord is giving us two seconds. When I woke up, all I could feel was his love. Nothing else was mattered at that time. My education didn't matter. As soon as I woke up, my education didn't matter. My future didn't matter. Nothing. All I could see was his that love. That perfect love of seeing God up there. That perfect love of seeing the time is up already. The time is here already, but it still look and give us that two seconds to make it, to make it, to make it. The only way God doesn't really want to stay long is because it is time. The Bible says no one knows, knows when it's coming. But God is telling us the time is up. The time is up. He can't take this anymore. The saints are waiting. There are people who died many years. They are waiting for those who are here to go so they can celebrate together. They are excited. The babies, those who people killed with abortion, they're shouting. They shout day and night, God justice. We want justice. We want justice. We want justice. All that God hate God is listening. The only reason we haven't seen him today is because he wanted us to listen to this and to seek him. He may come tomorrow. As this life may end, God may appear today. He may come now, tonight, as I'm speaking. He can. But where would you go? Would you be found blameless if you decide to step in today? Would you find, will we find ready? If Jesus decide to come today, we play about our salvation. We play about this because we think it's a joke. Heaven is real. There's a place called hell. It's real. It's there waiting for those who live their life to make it there. I always say this it has nothing to do with Jesus. Us making it to heaven. Is us making hell. Is that has nothing to do with the love of Christ. The love is coming to fulfill the law. The graces and love is telling you I am the way, the truth and the life. I am the only way to heaven. That's love, that's grace. Love is, this is the way to repent. You repent, you make it. And love is the fact you and I are here today. That's love. It is your duty and mine to take advantage of this time we live in. Don't waste your time in all the things. You're not perfect. 
You are not better than those who died this morning. You are not greater than those who are going to die tonight. You are not best or greater than those who died yesterday. As we are speaking now, they are so, they are so in the torment places. As we are here today, they are souls that will never see God and they will find, they will be there in hellfire forever and ever. They made the choice already. They made the way already. It is done for them. It is finished for them. It is, that, that is, that, that's it. Most of them never heard about Jesus. Most of them never had that, had that grace to repent. But you and I, God is giving us that grace. God is giving us, he's speaking to us. Forget about me. It's not me. I'm not the star here. I have nothing to offer. Everything is coming out of here. It's the Lord speaking. Because the Lord uses everything to speak to his people. So that that day when you stand before him, you have no excuse. Everything was said. Everything was done. Everything was said. Everything was done. You have no reason. And today God is speaking to you. God is calling your soul. God is calling you, come back. Come back. Because you only have that two seconds. You know, two second may seems to be little. Thank you, woman of God. I'm so blessed to have you. Two second may seems to be little. But that's the big grace. What else can we ask for? What else can you and I ask for? What can you ask for? The God full of love. The God full of love is giving us time. And as I was looking at him, he was looking back. He was waiting. We are making the Lord waiting. God was waiting. And I was trying to speak to those around me. No one wanted to listen. No one wanted to listen. And the time was it. The time was up. The time was up. And I went without even a soul. Even though I was shouting, no one answered that call. I left without a soul. I left I met Jesus and everything was done. Everything was done. It hurts to see this. It hurts to experience this. The pain is really deep because people don't take this serious. People don't take it. We think it's a joke. We think it's something that we can play with. You can play with anything. You can play with anything, but don't play with eternity. Don't play with your salvation. Don't play with your soul. Because on that day, you will shout for help. There will not, there will not be any help. You will shout for Jesus. There will not gonna be any Jesus. Jesus is going to be busy with those who accepted him. Jesus is going to be busy enjoying in holiness. Jesus is going to be busy with those who followed him. Jesus is going to be busy with those who gave their life to him. And you're going to be with your master. The master that you choose to live for. The one that you gave your youth for. The one that you're dressed for. The one that you paint your face for. The one that you fornicated for. The one that you did all that you did. You're going to be with him. And with him, there's no love. With him, there's no mercy. With him, there's no grace. He hates us. The devil hates us. He hates us because the Bible described him as a perfect angel. The Bible described him as a perfect angel. <laughs> he destroyed everything. And then Lord, the God says, let me make a man according to my image. I'm making a man according to me. And he heard that. He heard that. He said, I was perfect. I was the most beautiful and they're making, he's making somebody according to his own image. And do you think he's going to love us? We who are made with the image of God. Do you think he's going to love us? Do you think? And that was the reason why he destroyed Aiden and Eve because they were the image of God and he was jealous. 
Today God is speaking to you. Today God is talking to me. The time is coming. The time is coming when you and I will shout for help. There shall be no help. The time is coming when you and I will shout for grace. There shall not be in grace. The time is coming when you and I will seek repentance. The door of repentance will be closed. Don't wait for that time to come. Don't wait for that day to come. The day of salvation is today. The day of salvation is today. The hour of salvation is now. The hour of salvation is now. You have two choices, two choices to make. You take it or you leave it. You take it, you be with Jesus. You reject it and you suffer for your life. Thank you for being here. As we started, we started with the gospel of grace of uh, God looks in the heart and with the help of the Holy Ghost we try to explain with the message that God gave and we talk to our parents the things we do the things we dress anything that we put on the things we follow and in everything we said today please don't take it in vain the Lord speaks all the time anyhow there's no one who can stand before the Lord on that day and say, Lord, I never heard about you. He speaks. He speaks. He does. He does. And today he is. As I'm speaking to you right now, heaven is writing this day. As you decided to watch this video to stop by, heaven is keeping this that you watched this and the Lord spoke to you. You rejected or you accepted. Heaven is keeping. Heaven is writing, is noting this. And on that day, this shall be come to your story. Do not be deceived anymore with the gospel that God looks inside their heart. That gospel will take many to help. That gospel will take many to hell. That gospel is going to take many to hell. God looks inside the heart. Let me do this. Let me do that. Let me go here. Let me go that. Because the heart is what he looked after. That wasn't what God meant. As we explained in the beginning. Live a righteousness life. A holiness life. Live a life to please God. You are young. I get so many mail messages. People will say, I want to do this, but my friend is going to reject me because they think I'm old. I was rejected. My own father was making fun of me. My own sister was making fun of me. Everyone around me, nobody wanted to be with me. They said, you're doing too much. You think this is too much. I used to cry to God all the time, every single night. My best friend knows this. I used to come to God and cry. Lord, I can't take this. I used to say, God, I have already given my life to you. Take me. Take me. I used to ask for death. I was like, Lord, please take me. It was too much. There was not a place that I went without people laughing at me. There was not a place that I worked without people rejecting me. I was rejected. And the only people, the only few people who accepted me was those on Facebook, on YouTube, those who God called already on that same thing. They are the old, old people that God was touching to tell me, we are with you. We are with you, but I felt rejected. Do not, do not be discouraged. Even anyone dis reject you, even your friend doesn't want you. Do not be discouraged. At the end of the day, is you. When you stand before God, is you. It's not your friend. It's not your parent. It's not anyone you can think of. Do not be discouraged. Do not be discouraged. God are doing. You are fine. You are blessed to listen from him. You are blessed for him to talk to you because there are so many out there that God will never talk to. And until they die, they will not listen to those revelations. But if God gives you that revelation, thank him. It doesn't matter what comes. It doesn't matter what goes. It doesn't matter who rejects. Stay with God. Stay with God. And please, for those who take advantage of grace, please, please, by taking advantage of grace, you do nothing but you insult God. You insult the work of the cross. 
Grace didn't give you the password to sin. Grace didn't give you the key to sin. Grace was not there, it was not meant for you to do anything. Let me do anything I want because of grace. Let me know. Grace is there. It opens the door of salvation for all those who believe in Him. Grace is there. It makes us children of God, even though we don't deserve to be. Grace is there. It makes us daughters of God and son of God. Jesus used to call his disciple all the time. My servant, my disciple. That's how he used to call them. But the day he was going, who is now the father? They are not, they are not, they are not anymore my servant. But because of the father that I have made us one, they are now my brothers. And the father that sent me is now our father is now our father and that father is calling you today that father is calling you today to come back home like a prodigal son to return because the time is coming the time is coming when old man shall seek that father but the door will be closed I will shake it the time is coming when old man shall lift their eyes on the top on the, in heaven and seek for that father the door will be closed the time is coming when people will put the need to go back to go on the knees to seek the will of God but it will be closed that time is coming that time is coming get ready be prepared be ready be ready God is saying that he loves us. He said he loves us only if we could understand his love. Only if we could understand how he loves us. He says he loves us so much to the point that he sent his only son to die for us. It really hurts him seeing his people living in sin and rejected him. He's saying the hour is coming. He's saying the hour is coming only if we could see it. Only if we could understand this language. Only if we could understand what he's about to do. He says his coming is near. He has been talking. He has been shouting. He has been raising his servant day and night to stand. But his people seem to not be ready. <laughs> He's saying it's time to repent. It's time to return to him. Because he's the only way. It hurts him seeing people go to hell. But he can't do anything because that's the choice they made. He decided to speak to us today. Because the time is coming. I don't know what to say anymore. All was said. All was said. He still speaks. He still speaks. He still speaks. Even when we are in sins. Even when we reject him. He still speaks. He is speaking. Right now he's speaking. It is up to you and I. To decide if we want to take it or reject it. But the Lord is speaking. Every time he speaks about his love, it's so painful. It's so painful. Just imagine you have a husband, you have a wife, you love them and they don't love you back. How it feels. How about him who gave everything for us? How will he feel? 
God is speaking with pain. He's speaking with pain. He's speaking with pain. He's speaking with pain. The hour is come. The hour has come. The hour has come. Repent. For the kingdom of God is here. Repent. Repent. Many are dying every day and making the way to hell. Many are dying every day to making the way to hell. Many are dying. Many will die. They will go to hell. But God has given us the grace to know Him. To know Him. Please. Do not take this in vain. Seek God. Repent. And live right. The time is coming. Where all the doors of, doors of grace will be closed. All the doors will be closed. The time is coming. Lord, we thank you for everything. We thank you for your love. Because who, who are we to deserve that love, that perfect love? Who are we? But you don't look at us. But you look on your son who gave everything for our sake. We know you love us. It doesn't matter what we have or what we don't have. It doesn't matter how many times we cry. It doesn't matter the rejection of people. It doesn't matter. Lord, you love us. You love us and you want us to be with you. Even when we don't give you any reason to want us, but you still love us. You still want us. We thank you for this powerful moment that you speak to us. We thank you, Lord, because you spoke to our heart. We thank you for your love once again. We glorify you by shake shake your heart. We glorify you, eco shake. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your presence. Thank you. The presence of God is here. Wherever you are, if you feel like praying, start praying. We are all one at this moment. We are all connected to heaven. We are all connected to the power of the Holy Ghost. Start praying wherever you are. Start lifting God. Start praying for it. He has opened his ears to listen to us. He says he's here. Emmanuel is here. He says he's here. He's listening. Wherever you are, if you have one sin that you can't give away, that sin that you can't, you can't get away of. Pray to God, ask Him for help. So ask Him for help and repent. Repent. Tell God to speak to you. If there's something in your life that will stop you from seeing Him when He comes, if there are the things that you've been doing that will stop you, ask Him for forgiveness and tell Him to speak to you. Father, I pray also whenever we come to you, you will listen. I pray that whosoever will seek for you shall find you like your word says. I pray whosoever will draw near to you will draw near to that person, oh God. I pray that, oh God, whatever that you were able to tell us today, you will not go in vain. We shall put that in practice, oh God, and I pray that you shall help us. God, the, the Lord, the, word, the day is getting evil. Everything is evil. Everything around this darkness. We need you more than we needed you yesterday. We need you more than we needed you this morning, oh God. We need you more than we ever needed you. We need you more. For that everything is going down. Everything is darkness. Everything is wicked. We can't do anymore. We can't do it anymore. But we need you. For your word say who is in us is stronger than whosoever in this world. Lord, we need you in these bad days, in these evil days. We need you. We need you, oh God. We need you. When that time comes, oh God, please remember us. Remember us, yourself and your faithful servants, oh God. Remember how we sacrifice everything for your sake. Remember how we sacrifice it, our youth. Our youth. The youth that many are using, he will sacrifice it for your sake. Remember us, oh God, remember us. I pray that the message that we were able to, to listen today, it shall be in our heart forever. The enemy has no power to steal it. 
He has no power to destroy us because you live in us. We belong to you. I pray that you shall give us peace and you shall show us the true way to heaven, which is you. You show us how to live like you, to speak like you, to do everything like you. Because we are meant to be like you, Lord. Bless everyone who connected with me today. Bless our family, oh God. And we thank you for the chance that you've given us to stand and to repent and to carry on. It is not how many times we fell, but it's how many times we stand and carry on again. We love you, Holy Spirit. I pray that you shall visit us today. You shall speak to us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for being here today. I think my time is up. My time is up. Thank you. It was a blessing to be here today. If I can post your page, okay, I will, I will try. Thank you so much for being here today. This was one of my powerful life ever. Because God spoke, God was here, His grace is here, heaven was open, and I know that there are so many things that God will do today, and God will visit so many people today. All you have to do is to be connected to Him. You know, there's not any man of God that God will want to use more than others. There's none. It's all about how you present yourself to God. It's all about how many times do you make for God? Those that you see that God visits, God talk, God, God touch. It's not because God loves them more than he loves you. It's because they, cre they made that time to be with God. They made that time to be with God. So please try to make time for God. And he will visit you. And I know that so many people you will come to testify. Because I know tonight is your night. Most of the time when I share a live or speak. I get fight, spiritual fight. The devil comes to fight me all the time I speak because so many people go to see God and God does growth, God does great things. So keep me in your prayer and we are not scared of everything for we are called to be, to be like Christ, to share the gospel of Christ and we just did today. We just do today and share this video if you can. And I know it's going to bless somebody. It was good to see you. And hopefully, by the grace of God, I will see you next time. If not, if Jesus comes, I will see you in heaven when we will dance. Hallelujah. When we will dance and when we will be happy forever and ever. May God bless you. I love you so much. For God loves you more. May God bless you. Any question or anything before I go? Have you got any question or anything you want to ask? Anything you want to say? I have five minutes. You can ask. You can say. I will be able to answer before I go. Did I read your private message? No, I haven't. But I'm going to check everything now. Thank you. Sister Sarah, I'm going to check it now. Any question or anything? <laughs> God bless you, more grace upon you, sir, I Miss mean, Stephen. God bless you, more blessing, more blessing, more blessing, more blessing to you. Please, let us be ready for Jesus. Let us keep being ready. Do not let anything distract you from the presence of God. Do not let anything deceive you or anyone deceive you. Do not let anything deceive you, like I said. Please, let's be ready for him, for Jesus, because he's coming soon. And you don't want to miss him for anything. Nothing is worth it. Nothing is worth it missing heaven. Nothing is worth it. Nothing. There's nothing worth it missing heaven for. There's nothing. There's nothing. There's nothing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much, guys. My family in Christ, the only family that I have. And the only family that I'm blessed to have is you. Is you, the family that we have in this world. We may not see each other here, but the family that will be forever and ever in heaven. You're my family. You're my family because God is our father. I love you so much. Thank you. Any question? I only have two minutes left. I only have two minutes left. Any question? 
Any question? I only have two minutes left. Any question? Uh, where I, I, I am in the UK right now. I live in the UK. But I'm Congolese. I'm Congolese while I, I live in the UK. When I, next I'm coming online. So that's the thing about me. I don't come online often. I come when God tells me to come because I believe he's, pow he's more powerful when he allows me to come. You know, like Moses, if you're not going with me, I'm not going. So if God doesn't tell me to go, I don't come. I just don't wake up and decide to come. I want God to send me at least. I'm doing it with him and he's touching with the right people at the right, right time. So that's how I do. That's why I don't come live often. Any other question? Any other question? I'm so happy. I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm so happy. Any other question? No? That was it for today then. Thank you very much. I have to say bye. More grace to you. God bless you. And I pray God will visit, visit, visit everyone. And if you want to share a testimony, please feel free to, to share. Because I will keep you in my prayer, all of you. And God will visit you. That's for sure. God has to visit you and you have to come to testify. And everything that God tells you, don't doubt. Don't doubt it. Don't just doubt because He is the one who's going to speak to you today. And I will keep that in prayer. Like, seriously, tonight, God has to visit His people. You have to listen for those things. You know, you want to see rapture. You want God to speak to you. You want God to visit your hell and heaven. If you're ready, God will do that. God will do that. Just be prayerful. Be prayerful. Be prayerful. God loves you and I love you.